it's Steve Cardenas, a.k.a. Rocky the Red Power Ranger, and you are watching Smart Tank Revolution. And welcome back to the Smart Tank Revolution, where we always kick out at two. Yes, two, ladies and gentlemen. I am your host, the benevolent, intelligent, Mr. Donnie Wonderful, a.k.a. Big Time Donnie. And welcome to this very special episode of The Essentials. And what makes it even more special is that today is my birthday. Yes. Wheel in the horse and carriages. Let's start the parades. It is Donnie Wonderful's birthday today, December 25th. By the way, happy holidays to all our uh, supporters. Uh, we love you all. We hope everyone's safe and enjoying uh uh, you know, the holidays and Happy New Year beforehand. And uh, by the way, um, shout out to my colleague, uh, Joey Business. Uh, by the time this airs, we'll be about seven days out from uh, the new AEW game that we both are going to play and review. And I'm very excited about that. And uh, I just want to take a quick second to mention how uh, proud I am of my colleague, Mr. Joey Business, uh, you know, delivers excellent content on this channel which i encourage everyone to go back and listen to his episodes of the essentials are by far my personal favorite ones and i listen to them like a child that was waiting for saturday morning cartoons as a matter of fact when he sends them to me i don't even listen to them until they're posted here, so I hear it just like you guys hear it. And I want to thank all of our new subscribers and supporters. We love you all. Thank you for the engagements. Thank you for the the uh, the comments. We love to go back and forth with you all. But um, what we're going to do here um, is encouraged, by the way. Uh, if you haven't heard the, uh, the other episodes of The Essentials, if you find some time, please go back and find your favorite wrestler or wrestler you're a fan of and just hear how we rank them. Um, the descriptions on how we do that are in the description box. However, this is a very special one. The Essentials, 25. 25th episode on the 25th slash 2.5 because we're doing something special again. So... When we started this, I got Shawn Michaels out of the way in episode one. And then Joey's, my beloved colleague, did Bret Hart. And I listened to his, even back then when it was fresh, and said, you know what? Joey was fair. And I'm glad he did it because uh, you guys know what I would rank Bret Hart. But that still didn't stop me. It's my birthday today. And um, this is actually going to be more than just an Essentials episode. I want to point out some things that um, that I recently discovered, well, rediscovered in just a regular conversation about the Hitman. So um, real quick, uh, to explain how this one's going to be different, um, at least on the first one. Oh, spoiler alert. Uh, Donnie Wonderful's uh, rankings of Bret Hart are 10, 10, 10, and 5, 5, 5. All right. So, like, there it is. Like, there's no way in the world, even if I try to be biased, there's too much of an emotional connection for me to actually give him anything less than a perfect score. And I'm going to say that, and that might disqualify me. But you know what I have today? You guys hear this? That's a sheet of paper with some notes. Not many notes on it, because you know. If you're a follower of the channel, uh, like, well, if you're if you're not new to the channel, we usually go off the cuff with everything. But I had to write some stuff down. And what I wrote down is what's going to make this one different. I wrote down what Brett ranked himself. And also next to it is what Joey ranked Brett. Now, what Brett ranked himself, I believe you can find that in multiple interviews, even in his book, My Cartoon World and the Real Life of Wrestling. But to hear Joey's, my, my prestiged colleague, Mr. Joey Business, you have to go back to episode two. It's in the playlist. It's right there. It's right there. There's a playlist. It's right there. Just go to episode two. It's 2.5. It's 25 slash 2.5. But uh, we're going to actually, I'm going to talk a little bit about these and then I'm just going to go on a tangent here. So Brett ranked himself 
and again, the descriptions are uh, descriptions of the uh, criteria is right there in the description box. Feel free to read at your leisure. So it's from one to ten. The look, the promo, the end ring work. Again, you know, for more in depth descriptions, right there in the description box. Again, so Brett gave himself a seven on his look. By the way, uh, the thumbnail is of us. With Bret Hart, Mr. Joey Business, myself, and the excellence of elocution holding that beautiful, coveted, highly seductive, the first brown, not well, not the first brown, but the first sexy brown, Smart Tank Revolution television title. And there is going to be some content that's going to feature that title being defended. Oh, trust and believe. The upcoming years for Smart Tank Revolution will be phenomenal. Sorry, AJ, I've been using your word a lot lately, but nevertheless. Um, but in that meeting, we actually got a chance to chat with Brett. Um, not for very long, but long enough. Uh, this was my third time meeting Brett. I, uh, third or fourth, um, I, I'll just go with three. I, I, it, I've i interviewed him before uh, a couple of years back, but um, he's always been a, a pure gentleman. And when we approached him i really was um wanting to uncover the where in uh wrestlemania 8 uh where he actually bladed himself and um he mentioned it was the kick now after further review i believe he he the only thing he actually answered me was when he started started bleeding I'm not sure if he bladed there. I was trying to look at... I've analyzed WrestleMania 8 like the Zapruda film, like it was the JFK assassination. And I am unsure where he bladed himself, but he did a great job. Um, but outside for, outside of that, you know, he answered that for us. Uh, he really, really, really liked the belt. We told him about the channel. We told him that we have this playlist here that you're listening to. And he really dug the fact that we used his criteria. And then we talked about why he gave himself such poor why he shaved himself some points on his own system on his own rating system and i if you're judging yourself you know you're gonna be extremely critical but yeah he definitely was being modest and those were his words so brett gave himself a seven for his look joey gave him a nine now Again, like to, to hear why Joey gave him a nine in depth, that's episode two. I'm giving him a 10, the pink and black attack, baby. I think that was, you know, that encompassed his look. I think pink, uh, matter of fact, I'll also, uh, hopefully I can remember, but I'll also leave uh, a link in the description box with the with the um, interview that I did with him from, I believe, 2017, where I asked him directly, did he think that um, that him wearing pink, which is a very warm and, you know, well, it's more of a f uh, feminine, allegedly, it's supposed to be more of a feminine color, but, like, it's, you know, a very warm and it's very unalarming and welcoming. I always thought that, you know, the aesthetics of that, that color coordination, pink and black, multiple designs yet the same color coordination i i always thought that was really 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 welcoming and i thought that's one of the things that really helped them appeal to fans also you know those and joey mentioned it in his episode of the essentials those cool sunglasses those shades were remarkable and who wouldn't have wanted to be that child that he put those glasses on and then gave the signature high five to or the you know, like rubbed his head or, you know, the, the fist pump or whatever. But, um, yeah, so Brett gave himself a, a seven on his look. Uh, Joey gave him a nine. The promo abilities, uh, Brett gave himself a four. Joey gave him a seven. Then he gave him a six. Then he went back to the seven. I mean, as and Joey's being, as he said, that, you know, he, he was being generous. <laughs> But uh, I gave Brett a 10, and I even, we talked about it there too. Um, I told him, uh, in, in case you all don't know, I also cover boxing for uh, fightview360.com. I'm going to give a, give a plug out to the website. But um, Brett's promos, they weren't as, I, I'll give it to everybody that, you know, that says, all right, he wasn't the best on the stick. But to my... 
Well, to his credit, I argued that what Brett did was properly promote a, a, a fight the same way boxers do. So when boxers don't have much to say, they'll typically just reference the date. So whoever you are, if the, you if a reporter is asking a question, a game plan question or whatever, maybe they just don't feel like talking. They'll the 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 go to thing is to announce the date of the fight and, you know, tune in to see what happens because they're already fighting. So there's really no point of talking. So with Brett, I kind of got that that feel. I you know if your interview or if Brett's doing, they did promos differently back then too. So uh, you know they had the green screen behind them. They just let them air out whatever they wanted to air out, or um, you know there's segments where uh, whether it was the King's Court, the Heartbreak Hotel, Piper's Pit, wherever um, the um, the, uh, the funeral parlor, whether it's Vince McMahon holding a mic to Brett. Uh, Brett's face or, you know, whoever, you know, when Brett talks, it was very, very real. And it gave me a real fight atmosphere. And um, no matter who it was, I'll see you at SummerSlam. Basically, I'm like, I'm not ducking anybody. And I and and I think he was the first person I ever heard say that when um, when he refused to wrestle his brother Owen. He said, I don't duck anybody, but under no circumstance will I wrestle my brother Owen. Um, that, that seemed like it was really real. It gets the point across. So, and I thought he had no problem doing that. It became more colorful and more animated when he was a heel and he was anti-American because that actually gave him a story. But for the most part, in my opinion, Brett didn't need a story. He was a wrestler, a damn good one. And it ultimately went to, I will see you in the ring. What, what, whatever you, we got going on, I will see you in the ring. And that's why I think um, him and Sean really, really got at each other really bad because uh, Brett's already real. Um, everything revolves around that. We're going to settle our differences in the squared circle. Now, what if it gets even more realer than that? You got sunnier days. And of course, you know, Brett has the quote, the jam. He doesn't have it. You know, the, you know, you got those kind of things. But y- y'all know what he was saying. I gave him a 10. His in-ring work, by the way, um, Brett gave himself a 9. He knows he's a 10. He knows that. Uh, Joey gave him a 10. Smart man. And, well, I already said 10, 10, 10 for me. Um, then ours, the innovative effectiveness. Uh, Joey gave him a four. Go back and listen to it. The classic matches and classic rivalries, and uh, he gave him a five. Um, of course, let me backtrack. Innovative effectiveness, I gave him a five. I, I, five, five, five. You, already, you guys already know. Uh, the finding and redefining moments, Joey gave him a five. I gave him a five, too, obviously. But I kind of want to use this to veer off. I want to say this. One of the reasons why... I appreciate Bret Hart so much more now. And this may be more of a dig at Vince McMahon. I feel that Bret Hart, as great as his career was, the entire time Bret Hart was the second or third option. I feel as if he was the the safe choice not if let's put it to you like this you you're a high school senior you want to go to the prom you're 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 looking at the prospects and you have the ones that you like yeah you got the ones that you like but you know you you don't know if they're gonna say yes or no but the backup is your friend the neighbor the neighbor's daughter who isn't bad but you know you just if everyone else is taken, you go to the neighbor's daughter just to have somebody at your side. And that's exactly what Bret Hart was. And let me explain that. So title run number one, 1992 Bret Hart defeats Ric Flair. Do you guys remember what was happening then? Another scandal, the steroid scandal. So there's no Hogan. There's no ultimate warrior. Um, At the time, your best he uh not he I'm sorry your your best babyface was Bret Hart 
the evidences of that is when things started to kind of uh 1992 was kind of weird for the wwf uh at the time uh because uh i guess the popularity was kind of waning down so they did a lot of uh uh european tours now when they're doing the europe tours and I guess Hulk Hogan's there too. I guess this is kind of like the first hint that Hulkamania wasn't working anymore. Uh, and I'm getting all of this from interviews with um, with Bruce Pritchard and Conrad and uh, and even Bret Hart's book. But no one has disputed it. And I think it's pre- a pretty much known fact um, that Bret was getting the loudest pop. And again, I think that has everything to do with the pink and black attire and him giving away his shades. He was just admirable. Also, his entering work, like he can sell really well and draw sympathy. So it was, it was very easy to be a Bret Hart fan. And I think overseas, they loved him. They absolutely loved him. He's your workhorse. He's the Intercontinental Champion. But with no more big guys that you know Vince likes, well, you look around at your roster, you're, you see your baby face, oh, hey, Brett, we can put the belt on Brett. In Brett's book, now, like, I have no notes for this. This is all just going off the of memory. But in Brett's book, and in, even in interviews, the man said, hey, Vince McMahon and I forgot who else was in the office. They called me in the office. He thought he was getting fired. They said, well, we did everything we could with you. Uh, and I'm paraphrasing. Like, you know, we, we made you the tag champion. gave you the Intercontinental champion. We're going to put the big belt on you. And if you guys remember, Brett was like, uh, okay. I guess he was. He thought it was a joke. And, and well, you know, you guys can, uh, if you're a Bret Hart fan or if you're not a Bret Hart fan, I'm pretty sure, like, that his reactions to that, I mean, it's well documented and reported now, so you guys can uh, can hear it off in one of his interviews. But, like, I just don't think that that was, that, you know, it didn't sound like you, like, this, is, this, this was the choice that we really want. It's, okay, there's a steroid scandal where they're talking about all these big guys. You know, Warrior gets fired. Davy Boy Smith gets fired because, you know, Vince could get indicted. So we have to put the belt on a little guy. Let's do it. But then, lo and behold, another big guy comes and, and, and was in development because Yokozuna was phenomenal. WrestleMania 9 comes and that nonsense is, you know, with with the with the title change and how it got back to Hulk Hogan. Uh so so now you have a former WWF champion that won pay-per-view ago. Uh no no no. So they had I'm sorry, they had the King of the Ring in which he shined in the King of the Ring there and then he goes to SummerSlam, worked a great program with Jerry Lawler. Great, 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 but he he was delegated to the to the um the lower well I guess like the higher mid card whichever one's closer to the main event that's where Bret Hart was wrestling and he would often steal the show even more so than the champion no disrespect to Yokozuna or anybody but King of the Ring Bret Hart shine bright like a diamond. And I know Yokozuna beat Hulk Hogan, but we talked about Brett. And then you go to SummerSlam. Um, you know, the Luger and Yoko, well, that's fine. Brett worked double duty. Double duty. Doink and King Jerry Lawler stole stole the show. Or or as as a matter of fact, I believe his match got as much time as well, I mean, he wrestled twice. So yeah, like Brett got a lot of a lot of in-ring time in that night in Detroit. And then, um, you know, the 1993 uh, Survivor Series, which was here in Boston. Uh, you know, the Hart Brothers and the climax with that, with Owen turning. And then, you know, that, that planted the seeds for the WrestleMania uh, 10 match. So th- this was Brett's first year title run. And I'm going to go in, as far as to say that Brett was Daniel Bryan slash Brian Danielson before Daniel Bryan slash Brian Danielson was him. So let's go to the second title run. All right. So now uh, that one, I believe, was more celebratory. Uh, I think that one 
that second title run where he beats Yoko in Madison Square Garden after losing to Owen was a was a great choice. Um, but you can see, if you guys remember, this is 1994. I also, there's also a video on this channel where I talk about um, being a fan of Bret Hart in 1994. You guys need to go back and watch that. But that Royal Rumble... Do you guys remember where, where where Diesel stole the show? And I'm a huge Kevin Nash fan. But the big guys, that's who Vince likes. That's who Vince likes. Um, and I can, in hindsight now, I can kind of see the grooming. The very first pay-per-view that Brett defends his title at post-WrestleMania 10 was the King of the Ring in Baltimore. And that was against Big Daddy Cool Diesel. And Diesel won that match by disqualification. But do you guys remember the finish? The finish really made Diesel look strong because Diesel was going to beat Brett clean. Mm -hmm. It's the truth. It's the truth. Brett would go on to have a great match with uh, arguably, I, in, my, in my opinion, uh, one of the best classic with the uh, blue blue steel cage matches of all time with, with him and Owen and he lost it oh man it was real dramatic with uh with Bob Backlund but then Bob Backlund loses the belt three days later to Diesel he loses it to Diesel in Madison Square Garden in like eight seconds no disrespect to Diesel but Diesel gets that belt for a full year okay a full year. They then decide we're going to put the belt back on Brett, but he's just going to basically just keep the belt warm because we're grooming Shawn Michaels, Vin another pick of Vince McMahon. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. It never seemed as if Brett was really the guy that Vince wanted. Even though he's, had, he's held that belt five times. It just never seemed like he was the guy that they chose. He was always just keeping it warm and passing passing it over to the next person. We all know what happened in the Iron Man match. Brett takes months off and, and entertains WCW. Now you value him. Oh, man, he can go to Ted Turner. They can put our business out of They can put us out of business. We can be on the, employ, uh, the unemployment line. He signs the deal that you give him. He comes back, works a great match with, with Steve Austin. He's having a phenomenal 1997, and you guys decide, not you guys, but you know what I'm talking about. But then Vince decides that he's in financial peril and can't afford the contract that they gave him, which is a 20-year contract uh, guaranteed on the back end, or well, well, fat on the back end, and Brett just wanted to stay. And now they want to get him out. But not to mention... Not to mention that Brett wins the title again at the Fatal 4-Way and loses it the next night to another big man, Psycho Sid. Um, yeah, yep, that was a one-night stand. And then, well, Brett wins it again later on in 1997 and then gets screwed out of the belt by Shawn Michaels. But either way, like, I say that to say as great as a wrestler as he was, like he was the ultimate, ultimate underdog. When you put those things into perspective, how can you not call that man the best? Uh, Joey Business mentioned that he didn't have the career of Shawn Michaels. It seems like Shawn Michaels was blessed and highly favored. And it's now when we look at it, Bret Hart seemed like the redheaded stepchild. Only you don't ostracize the redheaded stepchild. You bring, you bring that stepchild in because you know he's going to work. You know, it's it's kind of like um like this uh, Cinderella and, and and the sisters. The fan, you know, they look at Cinderella, but you know, the the parents love the other sisters. It never seemed like this man was the actual choice that Vince wanted to represent the WWF, and I'm willing to argue anybody that. During his prime, in those prime years, the new generation years, there was nobody better in the business than Bret the Hitman Hart. I'll take Bret Hart from 1992 to 1995. Nobody was out wrestling him at all in that company. And Shawn Michaels was there, and Shawn Michaels was getting better and better and better and better. And everyone says Shawn Michaels can, can wrestle a broom and... 
and he had a great match. He stole the show at WrestleMania 10 with that ladder match. Where'd they get that ladder match idea from? Hmm? Hmm? Coliseum home video? You guys don't remember that? The ladder match. Bret Hart versus Shawn Michaels. Bret talks about it in his book. Yes, he does. He says he had an idea. It, it, it was what they, him and um, Dynamite Kid did that a lot over in Stampede. And he pitched it to Vince McMahon. And Vince had no idea what he was talking about. He said, find somebody and show me. And he found Sean. And they had a great ladder match. They had a great ladder match. They didn't even ask Brett if they can do it. But hey, I enjoyed that ladder match. But everyone kept talking about it like it was the first one. And I was like, wait a minute. How short is everyone's memory here? I'm defending my boy. I'm defending my boy on my birthday. I'm defending Brett the Hitman Hart. And I'm telling you that this man literally had a career, a 14-year career in the WWE. Well, his title run, the last five of those years, this man made something out of nothing. He was he was the personification of what a workhorse intercontinental champion was, is, whatever. Oh, well, not is, because I mean, belts mean nothing now. But back then, he was your intercontinental champion that they put the belt on because he was safe to do it. He didn't get the choice. I don't think that they Vince chose him. I just thought, hey, you know, like, and I'm, um, you know, not uh, Brett was very it was very well deserved he was very very deserving of of the reigns that was given to him but it just seems more more or less like they acquiesced to that due to the circumstances whereas it seemed like you know they built up Shawn michaels the boyhood dream bret hart's first title run wasn't even televised i'm sorry his when uh his first title victory wasn't even televised and this is arguably the greatest WWFE whatever champion in the world that has ever done it. One of the best that ever done it. Does that seem like, you know, I'm putting my trust in the company on your shoulders, Brett? And look what he did with that. Classic matches after classic matches after classic matches, putting on master classes in that squared circle. I'm defending my boy. That's why I say 10, 10, 10, 5, 5, 5, because he did it despite having obstacles in front of him. I don't think that he was ever their choice, ever. Kind of like Brian Danielson. The fans chose them. Vince had guys that he wanted. If it were up to Vince, we would have big guys as the, well, I mean, uh, Roman Reigns ain't small. Well, I'm just saying. Like, Vince, you were absolutely right there. And I told everybody, Joe, I told everybody that Roman was a was a star. But Roman, he, for a while, I, I hate to say this because you're doing so great now. But, hey, Roman was pushed down on, Roman was pushed, pushed down our throats. I'm just saying. Vince has the proclivity to do that and did. And I don't think that in the 90s was any different. I just think that this that was the first, that was the genesis of it. And it happened over and over and over and over. And I don't think anybody else in the world, in WWF at the time, could have made better with the circumstances given to them than Bret the Hitman Hart. You're not our choice. You're the, you're just a safe choice. But, oh, the safe choice is actually working out. Okay, well, then when things are okay, Vince, I'm not in jail. All right, let's, let's, let's get it on the big guys now. Oh, but, and I love Diesel. I love Kevin Nash. They say it, I don't. They said that Kevin Nash didn't draw. So then you put the belt back on the safe bet because Bret Hart does. You build up Shawn Michaels, the boyhood dream. Oh, they say it. I didn't. Shawn Michaels really didn't draw as a champion. Well, ultimately, who comes back in to save the day? Bret Hart. And then he wins the belt in uh, the following year. You know, and then he gives it to another big man and then wins it again. Um, loses it because... You know, you, you had to get the belt off him before he went to WCW. It just, I don't know. I'm just saying. Let me know if you guys agree. I, I'm looking at the timer. 
man, time flies by when you're having fun. But yes, once again, happy birthday to me. This has been a kind of special video, you know, the Essentials 25 slash 2.5. Um, I also went on a rant, uh, a tangential rant, but you guys let me know. My fellow Smart family, let me know. Am I on to something here? Am I on to something here? I can't wait for the rebuttals. I can't wait to hear everyone retort. And uh, once again, please, uh, you know, drop a like. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. It's, it's very big for us. We're riding a huge momentum wave into the new year. And on behalf of Smart Tank Revolution, we wish everyone happy holidays and a happy new year. And if we don't post anything or you don't hear from us till 2023, we hope that everyone stays safe and they stay happy. And we hope, of course, you guys all kick out at two. This is Donnie Wonderful signing off to the next one.